Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. Um, I'm taking this video and as well go cap in hand to so tell you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click on the subscription button and as well click the notification button so as to receive notification of all our videos that will be dropping on it. And after which you can like, you can comment and as well share on all various social media platforms. And trust me, it's gonna be very inspiring one, very motivating and edifying. Thank you so much. Bye. Ah, we thank the Lord gradually is helping us. We, we are closer to the end. Uh, I want to continue from where I stopped the other time, uh, addressing Christian sisters now. Important things that they need to know about themselves and about the man they want to marry, the brothers they want to marry. It's very important. So I stopped at um, uh, not uh, picking a quarrel or not standing up to their, to their husband. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, I remember, I think I have to add this briefly. The other power again that God has given you is the power of prayer. So God has given you, like I said, God has given you the submission power, persuasion power, and the, and the, and the influence power, power of influence. In fact, I remember Peter was addressing women who married unbelieving husband. And the man is pleased to live with the woman and all that. He's not sending the woman away. And the Bible is saying that by their lifestyle, they should win that man for Christ. That means you influence the man. You use your character. That's your good character. That virtuous character of Proverbs 31. You use it to get this man converted to Jesus Christ. Not by standing up not by, by claiming equal right, not by claiming gender equality, but by submission and by persuading and influencing, seeing the character of Christ in you, and then this man will be convinced, be convicted of his sin, convinced and come to the Lord. That is the power of influence. The next one I want to talk about is um, women, you should know that um, you have tendency of nagging the men. Naturally, women have that tendency, like uh, emotions. Men have emotions, but women are more emotional than men. Of course, same thing, nagging. Nagging, we have, we have men who nag too, but women are more to nagging than men. And so we have that tendencies, and I've said it earlier that uh, your power is your mouth. The power of women, I'm talking of generally now, born again or not born again, the power is their mouth. Why men's power is uh, their muzzle and fists to, to, to beat. But then, uh, you have that tendency of nagging. Sister, know it. Know it and, be, and consciously work on yourself that yes, I am a woman, and because of that, I have that tendency of nagging. And men hate nagging. So, please, please, and please, pray to God to help you have control over your mouth so that um, you will know how to use your mouth with your husband. Allow the Holy Spirit to set a control in on your mouth. The next one is a submission. I have said that that um, is your power. God has given you. God has given you that power. It's a power. Yes, the Lord commands you to do it, to submit your husband. That is God's uh, principle and standard. God commands women to submit to their husband. 
He didn't ask women to go and claim gender equality with their husband. He asked them to submit to their husband and he asked men to love their wives. And as he has commanded you to submit, that submission is also a power to you in a way. Because I'm talking from experience. When, you, when a man marries a submissive wife, there is no extent that man also will not go with that man. There is nothing that man will not be able to do for that wife. Yes, from my personal marital marriage experience, when you see a woman that we always reference her husband, honor her husband, submit to her husband, put her husband first after God, put her husband next, the, the man will, will naturally, will, will, will think twice before he would even hurt this woman, before he would, not, he would just look at this woman to die under, under stress. So, submission is your key. Use it well. But don't use it to uh, witchcraft your husband. Don't, 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 don't use it to control your husband irresistibly. That is, your husband will not be able to resist. And then you control him around everywhere and you, are, and you, you, you swap in the house. And you gradually use your power, gradually, gradually, and then you assume the position of the husband, and you push your husband, you push your husband, you push your husband, and you push him to the position of the wife. So he is now standing as a wife, while you are the one commanding and instructing everybody in the house. Don't do it like that. Don't allow yourself to be taken or overtaken in that term. It will not pay you. That is, you are going against God's ordinance and it will not pay you at the end of the day. You have to be very, very, very careful. There are some sisters like that, they have taken over. In fact, there are homes that once you enter those homes, you will know who is in charge. I'm talking from what I have seen. You enter some home like this, you know that yes, Christian homes, I'm talking, I mean, Christian homes, you enter like this, you know that hey, yeah, mommy is in charge. Because what you have gone there to discuss, after you have explained and discussed whatever, what you hear, daddy, is a mommy, kill any so. Meaning that, mommy, what do you have to say? And when mommy talk, the next thing you hear, is, you hear from daddy is, oh, tida, it's all right. What mommy has said is okay. <laughs> and, and then I will smile inside, inside, inside. Of course, sisters, I'm not saying you don't have good ideas, you are not wise. I'm not saying that what you have said cannot be the solution or cannot be the, the final. Yes, it can be. And most times it is. But there is a way you do it that uh, it will, you will still submit it under, under your husband. But um, what we have today is unfortunate. Some women, are, some Christian sisters are in charge. And they are really in charge. Don't be like that. It's against God's principle. You will pay for it. If not here, yeah, you will pay for it in eternity. Don't be a victim of that. The next one is um, when you marry that brother, sister, hmm, don't push him out of the will of God. For whatever reason, don't push that brother out of the will of God. Hey, it is dangerous for you especially. If a man is at the center of the will of God, that is where your security and safety lies. Sister, hear me and hear me well. If you push your husband outside the will of God, you have removed your safety. You have removed your security. If the devil gets hold of him, you will suffer the most. I have said it. Whatever happens in the home, you enjoy it the most. If it is sweet, if it is good, you will enjoy it the most. And if it is suffering, if it is bitterness, and, 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 and you will enjoy it most. So don't push him out. Especially, there is that tendency when, when the man is struggling, he wants to serve the Lord and serving the Lord does not allow him to do some businesses that will bring him big money or take up a job that will, that will bring him big salary, fat salary. 
there is that tendency for you to put up a, a body language or even say it out and all your mates are bringing good money for their wives and all your mates are working here and you have the certificate, you have the qualification, you are just doing work that is just bringing us menga salary or just small money and all that and all that. And so you keep nagging, I mean, you keep talking and repeating the same thing. You say it with your body language, you grumble, you say it with your mouth and all that. And the man, when the man could no longer bear it, the brother had to move out and take his certificate and go and look for a good job. Yes, he will get the good job, you will get the money, but you will suffer for it. He will bring home money for you outside the will of God and you will suffer for it. Sisters, don't fall into that temptation. It will backfire and it is dangerous for you. The next one is, uh, sisters, don't join the league of those Christian sisters who will need for their pastors, who will pay obedience and respect for their pastors and geos, but they find it difficult to need, uh, to need for their husband at home. They disrespect their husband at home, but they respect their pastors in the church. They do that, they do it well. They will kneel with their two knees for their pastors. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy Gio. Oh, this. Oh, that. They will kneel down. They will kneel with their two knees. They will do all that kind of things. And they, will, they cannot do that for their husband at all. Whatever. The Bible says, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. You know the meaning. The meaning is whatever you can give to the Lord. Practice it with your husband first. Give it to your husband first. If you give it to your husband, it's assumed you have given it to the Lord. And so if you cannot give your husband such respect, but you can give your pastor. Some of you sisters, you have some specific areas you think the Lord wants to use you. You have some... Um, Maybe drama, singing, uh, maybe taking care of children, children ministry in court, so to say, and the drama, singing, and all that. You have those, those areas you feel the Lord wants to use you. And so you are saying or you are claiming that you have your own ministry the way you always say it. Fine, there's nothing wrong like that. In fact, some of you even have teaching ministry, so to say. You have the apt to teach. You have the grace to understand the word of God, to dish out the word of God, to teach. There is nothing wrong with that. It is good. It is the grace of God upon your life. No problem about that. But um, as you, or you have ministry even to the teenagers, some to children, some to teenagers and all that. But um, as you are marrying, as you are coming to this brother's life, it's not your ministry first. It is this brother's first. It is your husband first, not your ministry. Don't make that mistake of prioritizing your ministry over or above your husband. You are treading into danger. You are, you are, you are playing with your home. So you must not do that. You must bring whatever the Lord wants to use you for if you have married the will of God, let me say this straight. If you have married the will of God, whatever ministry God has given you, we always find a fulfillment in whatever God has given your husband to do. Too. In your husband ministry, your own ministry will find its fulfillment. Every woman, every Christian woman, will find their fulfillment in their marriage, in their husband and not vice versa. So take note of that. Take note of that. Unless one, you are married wrongly. Or two, you don't allow the Lord to work things out for you. You marry rightly, but you don't allow the Lord to work things out for you. Then you are into a problem. You have to submit whatever the Lord wants you to do to your husband. You don't need to drag it with him. If you have a singing ministry, you have whatever ministry you have, and after marriage, your husband says, Sister, that invitation that you are called to come and sing, I cancel it. Let it be like that. Let it be canceled. 
and let it be cancelled joyfully. Don't grumble, don't fight over it. Who did you say has given you that ministry? Is it not God? Uh-uh. You don't need to fight for God. Who did you say asked you to marry this man? Is it not God? Hey, hey, now. Whose ministry do you want to do? God. God's ministry. Hey, hey, now. What's the big deal there? What's the big deal there? And who asked you to submit to this man? God. Hey, in all this now, what, what can you see? God asked you to submit to this man. God has given you that ministry. And uh, everything like that. And uh, this man says, don't go and sing. And well, what's your problem? Why not just leave singing? And just go to the Lord simply and say, God, you have given me the ministry to go and sing, but you said at the same time you asked me to submit to this man. In, in my submission, this man said I should not go and sing. Go. And you say I should submit to him as unto you to have submitted. And God will say, don't worry. He will sort things out. Don't fight for yourself unless you have ulterior motive. Or unless you have something, an hidden agenda. If you don't have hidden agenda, leave it to the Lord. The Lord will sort everything out. Today, many lady evangelists, many pastor misses are running ministry at the expense of their homes, at the expense of their husbands. They don't have homes, but they have ministry. And you think the Lord will accept that ministry from them? No way. God will not take it from them. Running ministry while they don't have their homes, when they are not submitting to their husbands, running around fasting and, and preaching here and there, running up and down, singing everywhere, making records and going to studio and all that, doing drama, going to, 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 to locations to shoot films and, and all that, going from one orphanage house to another, gathering money, and, uh, registering NGO without their husband's approval, without their husband's inf- involvement. And they are saying, I must do the will of God. Oh, no man can stop me. No husband can stop me. Because when I get before God, it is me that will give account. I will give account to God. It is not my husband that will give account on my behalf. Sister, calm down. Calm down. Leave everything to God to do. And then uh, he will perfect everything. He will perfect everything. Uh, let me round off with these few things. Uh, sisters, like I told the brothers, you need to understand the background, the background of bringing of your husband too. And let me give you a few, maybe three, I think three. Let me give you three that you need to understand. One, if the brother you want to marry grew up in a home, where the mother, the mom, was the breadwinner. Or, let me put it this way, where it was the mother that was feeding his father. Now he is born again. He wouldn't want history to repeat itself. He wouldn't want that to happen again. And so, he would want to work and work, and work, and work, because, and then. Another thing that you should watch out for is this. He might be unconsciously jealous of you. Especially if your income, if the income that is coming from you, sister, is more than the one that is coming from him. He is having the insecurity, inferiority complex. He wouldn't want you to have a say over him. He wouldn't want you to have any reason to boast that your salary is more than his own. Or the money you are bringing into the family is more than his own. Be patient with him. It is his background. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. It is his background. He doesn't want to. So there would that be unconscious rivalry. There would that be unconscious jealousy and the competition. He would want to make money more than you do. He want to get a job that is that pays more than, he wants to earn more salary than you do. Because he, he does not want what happened to his dad to happen to him. He does not want his wife to, to be feeding him. And so he has, he's carrying that unconsciously. And so he is trying to combine job. And uh, the other problem you are likely to see is he may not have time. He wants to, and it's all because he wants to feed you. He does not want you to feed him, he wants to feed you. 
to understand and sit together, discuss it together, and in, in, with time, you will overcome that. You will overcome that. So, the next one is, uh, uh, if you marry, I've mentioned it, but I just want to, for emphasis sake, if you marry a brother who grew up with a father who always give him that philosophy of owo lo berima, all the women know is money. That the best language of women is money. That women don't know any other thing apart from money. If he grew up from that mentality or he grew up with a father who always said that repeatedly, who act like that, all that the father does is to give the mother money. Nothing again. No complaint. He also will want to do the same thing. You want to just walk and walk and walk and we give you money. If you ask for 10 naira, he will give you 100 naira. If you ask for, for one shoe, he will buy three or four for you. If you ask for one gun, he will buy five guns for you. He will buy skirt and he will buy all kinds of clothes for you. He will buy you a car. He will buy, he will buy you latest car. He will just, because his mentality is, that is all you know. You don't know more than that. But you have to prove to him that uh, you need him more than all those material things. And you, you want your home to work more than those material things. But you, uh, you don't have to, to, to say it in, in a quarreling way. You don't have to say it in an abusive way. You don't have to, to, to confront him and say, hey, wait, wait, wait. what was the meaning of all the clothes? Like, you think I, 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 it's clothes I want? I don't need your clothes. I don't need your, your car. Take away your shoes. What is it? You don't have time, time for me. You don't have time for your children. I'm not, no, 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 no. no, don't take it like that. Understand his background. It may be because of his background. That all his mentality is, once he gives you enough money, you will, there will not be a problem. You will keep your mouth shut. You want to shut your mouth with money. So he feels that once he gives you enough money, you will, you will keep your mouth shut. And so... But you are telling him, no, your home is more than just money, 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 money. And it's not good, brothers who are also listening to this, you don't run a home with, by force, and you don't run a, a home by, with only money. Money plays its own role, or you don't run, you don't think it's only money that you, they use to run home. So all you are looking for is money, at the expense of your wife, at the expense of your children. You don't have time for your wife, you don't have time for your kids, for your children, you are just chasing money everywhere, money, 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 money. Oh, there is more to a Christian home than money, 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 money. You have to take note of that. And then, last but not least, if the brother grew up in the village, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and, and the parents were, the parents are farmers, no civilization, he attends primary school in the village, secondary school in the village, and all that and all that. You know what that means, sister. And you are the, you are the, 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 as we always call it, a slang. You are the butty type. You are the butter type. Indomie sister. You grew up in the town, in the city, in the, in the capital city. You grew up there. You are used to so many things. Going to restaurants, going to eatery, going to supermarket, buying this and buying that. That is your upbringing. And this man is coming from the village. He's so fortunate that uh, because of fashion and uh, so he, he goes to the university and then he's brilliant anyway. And uh, by chance he became born again and Providence and, uh, and Providence brought you together and you are engaged and you get married. All he knows is uh, eat your normal breakfast, eat your lunch, I mean eat your, your lunch and eat your dinner. He does not understand the in-between meals, uh, things, uh, meat pie, uh, chicken, uh, this one, uh, yogurt, uh, this. They are to him. They are. <laughs> and what else? You just you just finished eating amalana or pounded yam, and you still want to lick uh, chocolate. Ah! <laughs> he doesn't have time for that. And uh, you want to buy a uh, toy, toy for your children and all that. Or you want him, you want him weekend. You want him to follow you to go and sweep. <laughs> he does not, he's not used to that type of lifestyle. lifestyle. You want him to follow you to, to restaurants. You want him to follow you to, 
to supermarkets, eatery, and all that, so that you buy all those. He is not used to that. And the funny thing is, if he wants to do it, he will still overdo it. He will overdo it. He will overdo it. So you have to take it easy with him, so that uh, <laughs> so, so that over time you will get used to city life, and then you will. You will, over time, if he goes once in three months or once in six months, he follows you to maybe a restaurant or maybe to a supermarket or to, to a garden, to a garden, to, 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 to uh, uh, what do they call the, this place? Places where you enjoy yourself, you have fun and all that. If he follows you once in, a, once in six months or once in a year, over time it will grow to become once in six months, it will grow to become once in three months, and all and all like guys in three. So it's just a matter of time. You have to take it easy with him. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts, single brothers, single sisters. And then I will round up with um, those who are engaged. Uh, and I will speak on that and then we move to the next thing. May the Lord bless you and bless his word upon your heart and upon my heart as well in Jesus' name.